answer to the previous question, the idea of uh, the physical constants being finely tuned. And it's quite true that many scientists, uh, many physicists maintain that the physical constants, the, the half dozen or so numbers that, that physicists have to uh, simply assume in order to derive the rest of their understanding, I just have to be assumed. You can't provide a rationale for why those numbers are there. And physicists have calculated that if any of these numbers was a little bit different, the universe as we know it wouldn't exist. We wouldn't be here. The universe would perhaps have fizzled out in the first octosecond, and so we wouldn't be here, or other things would have gone wrong. It's tempting, once again, to, Im to import the easy, facile idea of a designer and to say that the designer twiddled the knobs of the universe at the Big Bang and got them exactly right, got the gravitational constant right, got the strong force right, the weak force right, and so on. But it seems to me to be manifestly obvious that that is a futile kind of explanation because, as the quotation says, who designed the designer? You have explained precisely nothing because instead of just saying, oh, well, the knobs were tuned to the right values anyway, you say, oh, there was a god who knew how to tune the knobs to the right values. And if you're going to postulate that, then you've, in a sense, sold the pass. I want to address the who designed the designer question, because it's the old schoolboy question, who created God? I, I'm actually very surprised to find it as a central argument in your book, because it assumes that God is created. And I'm not surprised, therefore, that you call the book The God Delusion, because created gods are by definition a delusion. Now, I know, and I ought to explain, that Richard doesn't like people who say to him that they don't believe in the God he doesn't believe in. But I think that this is possibly touching a sore spot, because you leave yourself wide open to the charge. After all, you are arguing that God is a delusion. And in order to weigh your argument, I, I said that it is you who's arguing that God is a delusion. Oh, sorry. And in order to weigh that argument, I need to know what you mean by God. And if you say, if there is a God, you have to ask who created God, that means that you're reduced to thinking about created gods. Well, none of us believe in created gods, Jews, Muslims, or Christians. And I think that argument then is entirely beside the point, and you, perhaps you ought to put it on your shelf marked celestial teapots where it belongs. The God who created the universe, ladies and gentlemen, was not created. He is eternal. This is the fundamental distinction between God and the universe. It came to exist. He did not. And this is precisely the point the Christian apostle John makes at the beginning of his gospel. In the beginning was the word. The word already was. All things came to be by him. God is uncreated. The universe was created by him. Now, I don't know whether Richard has difficulty with the concept of the uncreated. I don't know, and I'd love to know whether he believes as a materialist that matter and energy and the laws of nature were always there, because if they were, he does believe in something eternal. So perhaps the difficulty lies in believing in an eternal...